Um, let's look at another scenario. Supposedly, we have RNA-seq data of 200 pairs of lung cancer samples. Uh, these are all diagnosed as adenocarcinoma, uh, lung non-small cell lung cancer. And we also have their adjacent to normal tissues. And uh, let's just think about this really ideal scenario. A hundred of these patients, five years later, uh, after surgery, within the five years, you, you follow up with the patient and you saw 100 of these patients relapse, whereas the other um, 100 patients, they didn't relapse. And we're like, oh, that's great. You know, you learn something and you want to see um, uh, what's the difference. And so now you have five new RNA-C examples. And uh, from we know that they're also lung adenocarcinoma patients, and we want to decide um, whether they will relapse five, five years later, because if you predict that they will not relapse, maybe the surgery would be good enough. Whereas if you predict all oh, these patients are going to relapse in five years, then maybe after surgery, they might also consider uh, treating the patient with chemotherapy to reduce the chance of relapse. So uh, again, this is like 200, uh, sorry, 400 FASTQ files. So a lot of data to, to deal with. So what do we do first? Again, we will do remapping. Um, um, you know, FASTQ, sorry, the, not FASTQ, um, uh, DEC2. Um, frankly, at, uh, when you have a lot of samples, sometimes you might want to just run a salmon and if and then do a clustering and if the data is good enough you know like just based on initial analysis you see that you know because a lot of times the bad quality samples in the pca will show as outliers you could potentially um, just run uh, salmon and then run pca and you say okay these samples look pretty good you know clearly there's a separation between cancer and normal and uh, we can just forget about you know and then you, are, you can just run uh, RCQC and uh, sorry, um, RCQC just on the few outliers and you decide, oh, these are clearly outliers. You can just remove them as bad quality samples. So you, that will save you some time. Um, RCQC, unfortunately, doesn't directly run on FASTQ. It runs on the, on the BAM. That, that's why we still need to do a little bit of a, a BAM, like a star mapping. Um, one way to do that faster is you don't need to all the reads to run uh, uh, star. You can just subsample, say, 5 million reads. So supposedly each sample is sequenced to 50 million reads. You can just get 5 million reads to run star and to run RCQC because it will give you a pretty good idea what the quality of the sample is. Um, and then you can run a salmon directly on the, the overall FASTQ samples, and that will save you a lot of computational resources. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so, you know, with Callisto or salmon, you get expression index, you know. Um, and, and then you can, uh, yes, yeah, so as we mentioned, you, you, you check batch effect um, because, you know, it could be that these, uh, I, I have seen data like this. They did two more normal pairs and you, you look at the data, they're always clustered in two. It turns out half of the samples will process in the summer and the remaining samples will process in the fall. And that's clearly a batch, not really biological. So you might want to remove those and make sure that the remaining data really cluster uh, based on the tumor normal in this case, before you try to see whether there is difference between the relapse samples and the non-relapse samples. Um, yeah, so uh, one thing you might want to check is the differential expression between tumor and normal because they already give you uh, um, the um, some difference because individuals are still quite different after uh, different after all, and so you could consider running the PCA based on the differential expression because um, with the differential expression you actually get the the, the score from the uh, the, the DEC can all the genes, even if they are not differentially expressed, right? So you can get the uh, robust readout for the differential expression and use that to, to run uh, the, the, uh, the learning, machine learning part. 
Um, you can also just try if I use relapse or non-relapse samples to do differential expression. Do I see some differences? You might already see difference already uh, from, from this. Um, and, and so based on that, um, you might want to run a cluster based on differential gene and also um, check whether uh, those, you know, the, the, also you can, you can cluster based on all the genes that are variable, you know, most of the variable genes between the samples, then you run cluster on the samples and you can check whether the, you know, on the sample cluster, you can see whether the um, relapse status is, fo is, is focused on one cluster or the other. Um, and then if uh, based on the differential genes, you can run gene ontology or gene set enrichment and, you know, you can see whether there are some other public cohort and these differential genes are indeed associated with worse survival because some of the uh, molecular signature DB indeed will tell you this is a signature for previous studies of relapse in some other cancers and that will be giving you more confidence that you are getting something interesting. And finally, you can run classification. This can be run directly on the tumor samples and uh, to look at the difference between relapse and non-relapse. Or you can run this on the differential genes, you know, the left, the, you know, which genes are differentially expressed and you just collect all of the, those genes that are different, be different between tumor normal and then run them uh, machine learning. You can try all the different machine learning approaches, uh, evaluate their performance uh, with your cross validation, and then use this to, uh, and then you can examine the features, especially genes that are having high weight, and see whether they agree with your differential gene expression analysis. And then you can um, predict the new samples. And so, um, in the kind of the exam type of setting, you know, you want to let me say you want to do the star mapping, map reads to the genome, um, run. RCQC to get the quality control, get the expression index, PCA to visualize potential batch effect in the samples and remove outliers. Then you run DEC or, or Lima to, to get the differential expression. Um, this can be between tumor normal or it can be, be between relapse or non-relapse. And then you can run David on the differential genes um, based on tumor normal and also based on relapse versus non-relapse. Uh, or yeah, so it's run GSEA and then you can, yeah. So in, in the meantime, you might want to run some heat map or, or PCA to evaluate this. And finally, you can um, run some different machine learning approaches, to evaluate their performance using, you know, CRED or SKLearn. Um, I'm actually debating about this. This is a R based and SKLearn is a Python based. We, we might actually ask some students to try the the Python based uh, in homework three, we're, we're still finalizing homework three. And you can use this to pick the best method uh, to use uh, to predict the five samples. Okay, I see some questions from students. Um, so um, how would you actually remove samples that are bad? Um, you just, eliminate that from your analysis. So there are definitely cases when say you start from 200 pair of samples and at the end you decide that I can only use 180 pairs and the remaining 20 pairs will be eliminated from your study. Um, and this, for example, um, could be determined by RCQC. Remember the, uh, the MAT teen score? Uh, and also, if some sample is such a crazy outlier, totally different from others, I, I would think that you would see it directly from your RCQC. But if by magic, if it works perfectly, but it's just, it, it, it passed QC, but it's such an outlier, just supposedly maybe you have a sample swap, your, your neighboring lab had some unrelated samples, you will see that it as an outlier. I would suggest in those cases, remove that sample completely from your downstream analysis. Um, uh, and sample here would be like one library that has been sequenced, not individual reads. Yes, in this case, sample would be uh, one tumor or one normal, or um, yeah, it's just one RNA-seq data. Um, 
either you know paired and the fastq uh, in in two fastq files or if it's a single end it's just the one fastq file with all the reads for for that sample um so um so k means is you have to decide kind of your k uh you know i think most of the time you know you can run these machine learning approaches or some to determine k but most of the time people just pick a k and they they run k means and see the difference um for pca i would say i think most of the time people run pca on the samples whereas k means i think actually most of the time you can run this on genes you want to see what are the major classes of gene behavior that happens between the groups and especially in the time course it gives you a very good idea this is a general trend of a group of gene this is a general trend of another group of gene and k-means actually are, are used a lot more and um, they have very different purposes pca just project data onto two dimension but k-means usually you have kind of a you use a heat map to visualize this right so it's a um, very different. Uh, it's a yes, they are both clustering, but they are kind of quite different as well. Okay, so uh, I also need to stop the recording. <laughs>